everyone. This is Lori Lines, QHHT Level 3 Practitioner. I have a long-term client, Ben, with whom I've worked for a few years now. And he has had enough sessions with me, establishing a great rapport as he diligently has developed trust within himself that has enabled him to have a very clear connection to the higher self. So last August of 2022, I know that sounds far, far gone, but uh, back then we discussed Ben going deep into trance through the use of hypnosis techniques that, that I have incurred over the years. We were immediately energized and overjoyed at the thought of opening up to your worldly and otherworldly questions from my Facebook subscribers for this session. Ben came up with the number of questions that he believed would be best so as not to fatigue him during our question and answer space. I, in turn, posted on both my personal Facebook page as well as my business page a call out for anyone to post questions, those burning questions that were in alignment with the collective. The challenge was to find a mutually convenient time to actually have our session. So as divine timing would have it, we were recently able to get together to do this session. Ben shared that he did not want to see the questions beforehand or before the session that you're about to hear. And then I randomly chose some of your questions wrote them down on a piece of paper, and brought them into the session just prior. I hope you enjoy this question and answer session with Ben. I want to thank each of you for your questions and for participating in this information gathering session. Of course, thank you, Ben, for generously donating your time, for being service to others, and for answering questions for the good of those who choose to listen to the amazing wisdom that came through. Oh, and be sure to watch this video in full, too, as Ben will show you a rendering that he drew of what he was shown about the nature of ascension by the High Self. Also, there's a beautiful message at the end from the High Self that I think we can all benefit from if we will only just allow. So here we go. All right, so Hi Self, as you know that we decided to do this for the good of mankind and to do this session to provide information that might help other people in the world to know. And so I asked questions of some of my Facebook subscribers and friends and whittled these questions down to just a few. And so I would like to ask, is it okay if we go ahead and ask these questions? Yes. Thank you. Bella asks, how is humanity doing on the ascension? What would you like to say about that? Connections are rising. Mm -hmm. Connections are rising. Okay. The awareness uh, is growing. Self-reliance is growing. Is that part of the plan of ascension for self-reliance? Can you speak to that? Yes. Each is a divine spark, divine entity, divine element. And has to travel independently self so as connections grow the realization grows that it is choice it is it is that variety that is life and to not be steered or coerced but to choose independently that is what's rising and the choice to join with others the choice to interact with others the choice to accept or deny 
is independent. The power comes from that enormity of uniqueness. If you could put our ascension, humanity's ascension on a spectrum, where are we on that spectrum in the process of ascension? It is hard to describe. It is not a spectrum. Imagine a cone. Imagine a cone. The base of the cone is a circle and the top of the cone is a point. And you can be along that circle and along the wall of the cone. So it's a multi-dimensional spectrum. If you think of a clock, you could be at three o'clock, but you could be closer to the apex than another. Many can be at three o'clock and many can be closer or further from the cone point. So it's not a linear spectrum. Understandable. What suggestions would you have for us to, as humans, to stay in alignment and contribute to the whole? Stay in alignment and contribute to the whole. You are the whole. Everything contributes. You can do no wrong. Everything contributes. There's, there's no one piece of advice. Mm -hmm. I'm assuming that she's asking this question because there's no relatable history to compare it to. Not here on this one, mm -hmm. on this planet, no. But reach, reach for that connection and your other aspects have experienced this on other systems. It is not unique. It's not. It is not unique to this system, this earth, this system. You can find plenty of evidence. Is that all you wanted to say about yes. that? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Leanne, she asks, for those of us moving to new earth, will there still be life lessons to go through? Yes. You will see lessons your entire journey. It is not just the it is not just the exit from old to new, as you refer to it. it. Your entire journey is lessons. They just get they just get str stranger. They just get more complex or deep. There's a word for it. It gets more it's strata. There's another word for it. It just there's more lessons all along the journey. Can you elaborate as to how those lessons might change or feel differently on new earth rather than what we call old earth or 3D reality? Mm. An example would be that as an infant, you learn to crawl and walk and that provides mobility on the ascension you also learn mobility, but it's a energetic mobility, not a physical body mobility. That is an indicator of the ascension. You will become more mobile, but through energy. Can you elaborate on becoming more mobile through energy? You won't need to physically traverse a distance to visit. Mm -hmm. If you wish to visit a loved one, a relationship, you simply go within and tap into your mobility and then you visit. You will be less constrained by the body. Mm. Thank you. Will we be taking our bodies with us or Will it, my, our bodies ascend with us? Bodies don't ascend. Okay. Bodies don't ascend. Bodies are an, an interface. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do you care to elaborate on that? For you to 
understand what touch is, you must have a body. You cannot understand touch without yeah. a body. So it is an interface to the feeling of touch. Okay. Thank you. This is going to spark more questions in the future. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, this next question comes from Omar. When someone dies, if the soul has the choice to come back into a body instead of, a, of staying on the other side, why would a soul choose not to come back, especially if they have young children or people that they love so much? Is it always a choice when someone dies? It's a two-part question. Yes. So if you recognize that the connection is never severed, then being without a body, the connection is so much stronger that those in a body may not sense the connection and may beg for the return of the loved one. Yet the loved one on the other side actually boosts, it boosts their connection and the connection is so much stronger on the other side. Mm. So those left behind are feeling the separation. But on the other side, the loved one does not suffer that separation at all. Okay. Now the question about choice is the, the primary choice is an illusion. There's a, there's only ascension. There's only movement back toward oneness. So there is the illusion of choice, but just know that crossing over is the movement towards the one. Right. I'm going to insert my own question here regarding that. Um, when we incarnate into this life, do we already have it planned out when we're going to pass over or die or leave that leave that this body not timing okay. but event driven okay you incarnate with with goals mm -hmm. or events or experiences if you have a small list of maybe two experiences and you experience them before even adulthood, you cross having accomplished your objectives. If you choose many dozens of experiences that you desire in this incarnation, you may take a long time to experience them and cross at a senior age. So yes, you enter with goals, but not time expectations. Mm -hmm. Okay. It is the experience. It is the experience that is sought, not, not duration. Okay. Is there anything else you would like to say about that before I move to the next question? Imagine perfection. Imagine that everything is perfect and you, there is no wrong. You can make no error. You can harm no other. You need to hear that. Thank you. How does genetic coding and DNA play a part in reincarnation? It is, it is a vessel that is tuned to the environment. It is, so the coding is a tune, a tuning to the environment. So the vessels we occupy here are tuned for this planet and not tuned for others and would not survive. It has nothing to do with the spirit. She also asks in the same vein, when we reincarnate, does our new body have new DNA and new ancestors? The bodies follow a lineage. Yes. Okay. Yes. The spirits do not. If you merge them, it becomes even a greater uniqueness. Mm -hmm. And that is what is taught by life, is uniqueness. The merger of the spirit and the body creates a uniqueness, and it is uniqueness that is 
what is sought by life. Thank you. Have you anything else that you'd like to add before I go to the next question? There was a question in there implied by tuning, and yes, as the earth changes, so must the body that occupy it. So as the earth ascends, as the earth forms, you require a tuning of the body, but do not interpret the tuning of the body as a tuning for the spirit. It is a tuning for the environment so that the spirit suffers no uh, incompatibilities. Excellent. Thank you. The next question, is there a bifurcation currently taking place on earth? Mm -hmm. A split. Is there a split on earth is the question. Is there? Yes, but it is not a split by physicality or body. It is the split of, of journey that happens <clears throat> at this point in time of a, of a rotation. It is the split of three. It is the split of advancement. It is the split of, there are two, so there are two advancements and one non-advancement. And you split by choosing to serve others or serve self, or you make neither. And that would be the third. So one Suk thinks that it is only two and that there is either ascension or non-ascension, but there is two towards ascension and one non-ascension. Thank you. Another part to their question is, how will this work or will it mean the 5D people will be living outside the current system and the 3D people stay in a matrix completely collapse and everyone automatically go into 5d as a result and those that choose not to continue to 5d will be part of the calling c-u-l-l-i-n-g yes calling mm -hmm. this is a difficult depiction to convey but the person in body sees time and distance as reality and the ascended don't restrict themselves to those vectors so the body does not ascend so there will be a perceived dying of the body so when that body death happens is the launch point for the next incarnation. This next question said, thank you so much, Ben, for doing this. And thank you, Higher Self. And the question is, what are the most important next steps for the highest good for awakened humans to do or concentrate on to help Gaia and mankind. So to help and aid is to focus on your journey, your connection. It is to go within. When each divinity advances, so will the surrounding community. The questioner wants to know what each can do. Yes. And it is an individual answer. Gotcha. Each divinity shall focus on one's journey, one's attunement, openness, as each climbs and it encourages others to climb the community climbs and you get the 
larger ascension that is sought. Understood. Thank you. I know we agreed on six questions, but I did write three more. Are you willing and able to answer more? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Tammy, I know her. Uh, she would like to understand more about parallel worlds and how they work. Can we jump timelines? <laughs> and do people do that? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. You have so much potential to unlock and some unlock early and some unlock late, but it is all present in you now and adventure forth and seek any timeline you desire and it is yours. You can bounce and play and experiment. It is unlimited to each. Is it safe to say that people do this already? Many mm -hmm. do it in the current incarnation, but it is rare in the larger population. Okay. You are each uh, able to do some level of it. If one loses time, track of time, it has happened. Your reference is a clock and thinking to yourself that it is only one hour and surprising yourself with a different answer on the clock is evidence that you have done just what Tammy asks. Okay. As part of this question, she asks, is there a version of us living out our alternate choices? Yes, for there is only oneness experiencing many. As answered earlier, the life is the, the pursuit of all those experiences. So you never deny yourself an experience. You, you branch and it will all merge, but it is limited in a visceral point of view when you are anchored to a vessel and a favorite uh, timeline. Just know that the questioners all are in a timeline by preference that you have your favorite or your you are drawn to path and that the other experiences though are happening in parallel you have communicated your preference and it is the one you believe to be your single life but it is not a single life it is merely a preference okay I know we touched on this a little bit and uh, when we talked about people dying and she wants to know same person Tammy wants to know do people die that die here stay living in other realities and can we access these realities somehow mm -hmm. her question presupposes that the body is the life but think about if the body is simply a tool in one's hand that you set down. You set down the tool, but isn't it still you that can pick up another tool? It is a false premise. You are life, and if you choose to set down the tool on earth, and pick up the tool on another planet that is your choice and within your capability. 
always. Okay. This next question comes from someone I know on Facebook named Lori. And she'd like to know why or how is deep space actually light and not dark except directly behind the planets? Huh. I, again, believe that perspective is harming the question. There is always light. What is being asked is the absence of light or what we perceive as a shadow. But what if light passed through every body in the creation? Then is there not light everywhere? Mm -hmm. So do not ground oneself by a body perspective. Don't stand on a step and see the shadow. If you stand on a step, you can turn in all directions and see light and life. Excellent. What type of reality do those who already pass experience? How is that side and what do they do? The experience is is all of the senses that you refer to as senses minus those bound by a body. So no touch or taste, but complete perception of the oneness. There is still a, a what is the word? There is still a, a, I want to say distance. There is a, there is a, the word, we'll use distance. There is still a distance between you and the one because of the need for the experience to be unique. But there is a feeling of uniqueness in the other side in that you identify yourself as an entity among the one or among the creation because ultimately we are intended to return to one but there is greater perception there are no the the opaque or the obstructions that we install here in this incarnation there are no similar obstructions on the other side of what is called death excellent thank you so that concludes our questions from the Querence on Facebook and I want to thank you so much. It is never a mistake to choose an experience. There are no errors. So always move toward the challenge, the expansion, opportunity, the growth, the new connections, the word the uh, the curiosity if you were to give one big message to those listening to this recording what would that be that if you only knew and would open yourselves to the immense love and worthiness and true admiration that flows over you you would suffer less you are divine incarnate and you are entirely loved and 
you have should have no no fear you are cared for and carried and enveloped and hugged and so many words for surrounded for encapsulated in you are loved so loved and you need to allow that more each night just ask each night as you are trying to go to sleep show me this love i'm supposed to have show me this love i am entitled to make that your nightly prayer and you will know this feeling we speak of beautiful thank you don't lose don't create distance between you and the love that you are entitled to thank you is there anything else that you would like to say before we come to a close before we close back to the question from Wun Suk for the split you are gifted with the choice and there is nothing wrong with any choice for those who wish to explore service to others then think of others equally as you think of yourself knowing that together you are one there is no error and for those who choose service to self there is again no error it is purely a contrast to other you could not identify a service to others without observing a service to self the concept of duality is intentional if there is no duality there is no perception of choice and the creation is nothing but a pondering of choice so there is a saying choose wisely and it gives a chuckle to others because all choices are the wisest and this reveals itself as you ascend in that word it reveals the choice was perfect at that time perfect so enjoy it thoroughly it is the gift from the creation thank you so much if you found this video helpful or valuable please like comment and subscribe and if you're interested in a QHHT session or any other kind of hypnosis session, please visit my website at www.lorilines.com. And let us know in the message box if you'd like to see more videos like this and would like to participate by asking those burning questions inside of you. I thank you for listening, and I wish you love and truth. I am Lori Lines.